Let's turn our Bibles to book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 3, Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14, our familiar verses. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. The title message today is, There's No Time Machine. There's No Time Machine. There's No Time Machine. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 and 14. The Bible says, Philippians chapter 3, verse 13, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Brother Bogey, can you please pray for the message? Lord, for just for uh, saving our souls from going to hell, Lord. It's uh, just a blessing to be able to be able to gather here today, Lord. Uh, and uh, and we thank you for that, Lord. We just uh, we come to this next hour of uh, preaching, Lord. And uh, I need it. I pray, Lord, that you please help us to redeem the time and uh, bless the message. Please uh, fill the Holy Spirit with uh, fill uh, the pastor with your Holy Spirit. And each one of us uh, fill, Lord, so that we can uh, heed to your words and. Uh, uh, walk out better than we came in. Yes. I pray, Lord, that we would uh, be uh, pleasing in your sight. Help us today and help us in this uh, uh, next hour. In Jesus Christ's name, please bless. Amen. 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 There's no time machine. As Christians and as a human being, you tend to look back many, many times. You tend to always think about what if. You tend to think about could I have made it better? But Christian, Christianity is all about pressing forward. Amen. It's all about going forward. You have to press on. People like to live in the past, as they say. But you can't live in the past. When you live in the past, you're only going to reminisce of what could have been. And you become lazy. And you become nostalgic of certain things that you can't do anything about. Wouldn't it be great if you and I could go back five years ago? and do things different. Even a year ago, even a week ago, even yesterday, that's the wish, and that's what people want. And people are fascinated by time machines. Why? Because they want to go back. And what's the number one reason they want to go back? They want to go back to see what happened. Not necessarily. They don't want to go back to see how the world was. They don't want to go back to see if, they wanna, if there's a dinosaur or whatnot, right? People want to go back because they want to change things. People want to go back. They want to see if they could make things better. If marriages are broken, they want to go back and see what could have they done better. If families are broken up, they want to see what could they have done better. If they could go back and change certain things and have a better result currently or in the future, they want to go back. But there's no time machines out there. No time machine. Don't expect because you're saved. Don't expect because you're a Bible believer that suddenly you could just go back in time. You know, maybe God will give you like certain supernatural instance where you could go back in time and change things. You can't. There are, there's no time machine. You can't change what's happened in the past. And as Christians, you have to start realizing that I can't go back in time. I should stop thinking about what happened in the past. You know, the devil wants you to always think about what's happened in the past. The devil wants you to think about what's happened yesterday. The devil wants you to think about what happened a week ago. The devil wants you to just tie you down to things that's happened in the past. And especially if those are bad things, sinful things, especially if those are things that you regret, the devil wants you to dwell on it. The devil wants you to think about it every second. The devil wants you to keep you down. You know, there's too many wet blankets, right, so to say, in Christianity. We have too many downers out there. Your face is all about, you know, instead of going up, it's always down, right? You know, there's famous saying, you know, always look up, right? Always look up. There's reason, right? You look up to third heaven. There's reason. Yeah. But people are always, always tend to be negative about every single thing. I know Bible is a negative book, right? You know, and sometimes people turn it into, you know, when Dr. Ruckman talks about negativity, you know, forget about positive thinking, you yourself don't really realize the important meaning of it, and you just tend to be a negative person, right? And, uh, hey, you know, Doc said it. You know, you're a fool. 
you know. He was one of the most joyful person. He was one of the most bright person. I mean, he was very competitive, but he was happy, right? But you yourself, you're, you live your Christian life as if this downtrodden soldier out there just to kill people, but you have no joy. You lead a soul to Christ, there's no joy. You read your Bible, there's no joy, right? You talk to your family about doctrinal stuff, there's no joy. Heaven is not real to you, there's no joy. Why? Because you are just expecting a time machine. You want to go back in time and you think that you could change things, right? You think that long enough, you think some things will change. It will never change. You will never, ever change. And if you are still dwelling in the past, you're just thinking about the past, you're a fool. I mean, you're a fool, right? No, you can't change anything about it. Okay, so 10 years ago, you know, a lot of people talk about this, right? 10 years ago, if I bought Bitcoin, right? You know, I'll be a gazillionaire right now, right? Did you? What difference is it going to make, right? And you go, you know what? If I got saved two weeks ago, man, I wish I was, what if I was saved 10 years ago? Did you? Nothing changed, right? Oh, yeah, you know, I should have taken that job 10 years ago. Did you? Nothing happened. All you're doing is reminiscing and going back in time and trying to think, you know, if I had done that, done this, done that. But you're just wasting your time. That's why many, many Christians can't do anything for God because all you think about is the past. I mean, the Bible says forgetting those things which are behind. You have to forget, Amen. right? And, but before you forget, if you have any sinful ways, right, point number one, you have to resolve your sin problems. You have to. If you don't resolve your sin problems, there's no pressing forward. You will never go forward unless you resolve your sin problems. We use this verse many, many times. 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from un unrighteousness. You have to resolve your sin problems. You have to. Don't expect to take forward step when you are bound by all your sins from the past. Yeah. You know, people say, God forgives and forget. Yeah, if you take any action, right? Don't expect Lord to forgive and forget when you haven't done anything. Obviously, you know, your body and soul separated once and for all. You know, that's why you're going to heaven forever. But physically, your flesh-wise, if you're a safe Christian, if you don't resolve your sin problems, forget about pressing forward. You're that person who's always thinking about the time machine. You're that person who's always thinking about what could have been, right? You're that person who's always enamored with the things of the world. You're very materialistic. You know, people who always talk about time machine, Christians always think about, you know, what's happened in the past, what could have been. I could guarantee you, because, you know, I go through the same thing. You are very materialistic. You are a greedy person. You're envious and jealous for sure. Yes. You know, people always think about those things. You know, if I could have done that, then what could have been different? Right. Maybe you would have more money. That's greed. Maybe I could have, you know, had something or been better at certain things. Sometimes it's because you're envious and jealous of other people. You know, people are, a lot of young people, they're studying to go to college, right? And if you might be in college, you're like, you know, what if I did better on that test, right? If I had gotten an A, if I had a higher GPA, you know, I could have gotten into a better company and stuff. I mean, would it really have changed anything except you wanting to have a better job, show off to people that you are a better person? And that's all about your envy and jealousy of other people. Just because someone else has a better position, better life compared to you because you're such a miserable person, don't think that thinking about that past will change anything. Right? It doesn't. All it makes you is a miserable Christian. It's sad to see this day and age, especially when we have this local church, very precious local church, is full of many, many Christians who's just miserable. I mean, 
you know, I, as a Christian, you shouldn't be a miserable person. Yeah. I mean, your blood bought, your eternity is guaranteed in heaven. You have the Word of God, perfect Word of God, King James Bible, right? You have a saved brethren. You have someone you could talk to, go to. You have opportunity to lead souls to the Lord. You have opportunity to get right with the Lord. You have opportunity to get closer to the Lord. You could, I mean, really, quote, unquote, experience, you know, the full Christian life that God has prepared for you. But no, because of you always thinking about the past, because of you not forgetting things that you should forget and just press forward, just like Lot's wife, all you're doing is just looking back, but you don't resolve any of your sin problems in the meantime, so you are just a miserable Christian. And if you say, I'm a miserable Christian, there's hope for you <laughs> because you know your problem. If you're not joyful listening to preaching, if you're not joyful reading your Bible, if you're not joyful leading souls to the Lord, if you're not joyful amongst your family members who saved, then something's wrong in your life. You're a miserable Christian. And that problem is always sin. Because there's sin in your life that's holding you back from going forward. And you could work out, you could exercise, you could do anything you can to get stronger, to move forward. But if you have 2,000 pound car tied to your waist, many times you can't go forward. If you have a 10 ton building tied to your back, you can't move forward how much you wanna do, how much you wanna go forward. You have to cut that off, cut that tie off, yes. right? cut that knot off, right? And those are sin. So if you have any sin problems in your life right now, you have to resolve it. Don't look back and say, you know, I could have resolved this sin problem two years ago, five years ago. I didn't. So I can't do anything about it. Wow, you're a failure, aren't you? Right? You know, people say, don't you ever call me a failure, right? But you are, though. If you cannot get right as a Christian, you're a failure. I'm a failure if I cannot get right as a Christian. I mean, if I'm unsaved, maybe, you know, I have all the justifications in the world. But as a saved Christian who has Jesus Christ in my heart as my Lord and Savior, sealed with the Holy Spirit, I have no excuse not to get right with the Lord. Yeah. I don't. Why? Because I don't forget the past. I don't. Why? Because I don't want to let go of my sin. You have to resolve your sin problems once and for all. I mean, the reason I'm preaching to myself, the reason you're listening to it is because every single person who's listening has multiple sin problems that you have to resolve once and for all. Amen. I mean, it's a work in progress. However, in order for you to go forward, you have to confess your sins. Yes. I mean, true repentance, right? You know, there's repentance before you get saved, and there's repentance after you get saved, right? It has to be true turnaround, right? You have to turn around. I mean, we say it all the time, right? I mean, you can't go towards God if you're going that way and you don't turn around. Right. You have to. All you're doing is like if that's the place where you need to be, you're just going like this, always like this, and you're just looking back. You're looking back, it's like you're saying sorry to God, right? Just like Judas, just like any of your false confessing of sins because you do it the next day, right away, right? Like you come to the altar, pretend in front of everybody that you're getting right with the Lord, but your heart is full of the devil and deceit. And you're like, ah, you know what? I have to look good in front of people for my sake, my family's sake, but... What, where does that get you? Nowhere. For a change, if you really want to press forward, you have to be honest. Be honest with the Lord. Just be like, man, Lord, I'm a hot mess. You know, I'm a mess. And the Lord, I need to resolve my sin problems. The best way I know how, Lord, please help me. Lord, I forget. I've forgotten. A lot of my sins. You don't forget about any of the regrets, right? But you forget about all your sins, literally. I mean, you don't remember anything. That's why you never really get right with the Lord, because you don't really resolve it. 
like you should. Yeah. Then pray to the Lord. Lord, help me to remember those issues, those sins that I need to get right with you with. Right? Yeah. You know, then Lord will give you that remembrance. Lord will give you that, you know, knowledge. Then you get right with the Lord. There's never going to be a hope for you to go press forward unless you resolve your sin problems. There's no if and buts about it. It's just like this. Again, you're doing all you can without resolving your fundamental problem of sin. Sin is that, you know, 20 ton anchor holding you back. Yeah. You know, if, even if the boat and you're the boat and you have all the power in the world, but if that anchor is heavier than the amount of power that you have to go forward, you can never go forward. No. You could do all you want. But a lot of times, what happens when that happens? You blow your engine, right? Yes. You pretend without resolving your real issue. And, you know, those are the people come to street preaching, witness to people, teach the Bible, preach the Bible, but because they never solve their sin problems, they get burned out. Your engine gets burned out. I mean, you think that you're doing everything for God. You think that you're so spiritual. You think that, you know, you're that person that needs applause from everybody, commendation. But you're that person, that hypocrite. One day, your engine will die. Why? Because you never resolve that anchor problem. You never resolve that sin issue. Man, that just stubbornness, that hate, that envy, jealousy, all those internal sins that you've had, you never resolve and you just pretend to go forward you are going to die. Your engine will die. And unfortunately, what happens? When you're on a boat, you have passengers. Man, then, you, then you're going to sink together. You're like, oh, you know what? I, I have the same type of anchor like you. Uh, I like we're in the same boat, right? You know, like you're fresh up the boat together. You're like, oh, let's, do, let's stay together. And then... You're out there street preaching together. You're out there doing things of the ministry together. But both of you are in the same sin problem. Anchors down. Right? One burns out. Engine dies. Disappears from ministry once and for all. And then you are not far behind. Right? So don't play games with God. Yeah. Don't play games with the word of God. Don't play games with sin. Because it will eventually kill you. I mean, God did not write, if he leave after the flesh, he shall die for no good reason, right. right? As Christians, if you and I live after the flesh, there is a guarantee that you and I will die. Like, I want to die fast, right? Live after the flesh. You will die fast, yes. right? Like, I don't want to live in this world anymore, you know? It's so miserable for me because of my sins. People who want to die, usually, unless they're going through such a bodily torment, right, because of physical issues, and you should never, ever judge that person or think that you empathize with them unless you actually went through it. Leave those people alone. Just pray for them, right? But because of your selfish ways, because of your wrong decisions, because of everything that you've done wrong in the past, and because now your life is hard because of your sin, and you're like, I don't want to live anymore, Lord. You know, you're a fool. Right? That's not the way to live a Christian life. You just have to resolve it. Man, just go to the Lord and resolve it. Yes. How hard is it? Very hard. Easier said than done. Yes. But you have to get right in your heart. Amen. Let the Lord help you. You can't do it on your own. Your flesh, the world, and the devil will constantly stop you from taking that step forward. Yeah. It will stop you from any chance of you getting right with the Lord. It will make you start thinking about the past. It will make you constantly think about all those things that where you are the victim. Right? A lot of Christians think that they're victims. They think that, oh, man, I'm a victim. This victim mentality that's 
prevalent throughout the world. I'm a victim. I was not born into a millionaire's family. Lord, you know, I never had anything. I mean, but you have eternal life. Woo! You have the word of God. Yeah. You know, you could have an eternal happiness. You could actually oh, be joyful. God. You could be happier than Musk, Bezos, everybody combined out there. But you're complaining. I don't have money, Lord. I don't have money in my life. And then you're complaining. I don't have the looks, Lord. I don't have the looks, you yes. know. Like, and then it's, if we truly come to our own senses, it's like a farce, right? Amen. And people say, I mean, that is the biggest fool talking. You have to resolve your sin problems. Forget about anything else. You have to resolve your sin problems. How much or how many times do you have to hear, do I have to hear to resolve sin problems, right? Probably more than we've been hearing, more than we've been acting towards it, right? Yes. Because... One thing for sure is that if you don't resolve your sin problem on a daily basis, it's going to grow. It's inevitable. Right? That sin will always grow and grow and grow. You know, when it grows for multiple years, it's going to take multiple years of effort to resolve that sin problem. That's the best thing is to examine yourself and resolve that sin like today. If you waited all this time, do it today. You go home you, right now or wherever you are, you have to resolve it. Because time machine is not going to help you. Your foolish thinking, uh, your mind is thinking, you know what? Five years ago, if I had the choice, I wouldn't have done it. And I'm okay with that. What? Just thinking about it is okay? A lot of people say, you know what, you know, I feel bad. Judas Iscariot attitude. I feel bad for what I've done. That's it? Aren't you going to do anything about it? You know, words are so cheap. If you just say it with your words, you never resolved anything. A lot of Christians say, I said it. So what? Your action doesn't show anything. Everybody could say it, everybody could talk, but if you don't do it, it's for naught. It's like a vapor that appears for a little time and then it just vanishes away. It's like there's a hint of hope that light was there, but cloud just came in and the darkness everywhere again. And then when that darkness comes, it stays there for a long time. And when you see the sky, and it's very cloudy, and you're gloomy, but suddenly light shows. It's beautiful. You know, maybe you're like, man, I wish the Lord comes back right now, right? And that's the time when you really have to take action. That's the time when your heart is contrite, and it is broken. It is supposed to do something with it, but you ignore it. You're like, ah, oh, that would be nice. And then you take your good old time. Right? You know, you could just resolve it like that, but you take your good old time. Like, Lord, I wish, I know you're going to leave the light there for a while. So let me go back. Let me do some stuff. Let me finish some stuff. And then by the time you come back, that light is gone. You're in total darkness again. And you're that Debbie Downer. You're that complainer, complaining to God, God, why didn't you give me opportunity to get right? When God is giving you opportunity to get right multiple times, hundreds of times, thousands of times, tens of thousands of times for many of you, yes. and you don't do it. You want to press forward? You have to resolve your sin problems. When was the last time you actually went to the Lord and really confessed your sins and got them right with the Lord? It's not about little ticky tack, you know, pretentious things where you go get on your knees for five seconds and say, Lord, I'm so sorry for what I've done. Forgive me. And you're done. That's not what true repentance is, where you actually spend time with the Lord, where you're truly sorry about your sins and gotten right with the Lord. 
if you don't remember the last time you did that, then you backslid in a long, 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 long time ago. You're a backslider. And when you fall in so much, it's going to take you to come up. But you have to start somewhere, right? Don't expect to just ride the time machine and go back. Right? That's not going to solve you anything. You have to just see where you are and just resolve it. Yeah. Don't go back anymore. And once you resolve your sin problems, then you have hope. Then no time machine in the world will entice you because you're just looking forward. You're just looking at that high calling. You're looking at that price. And you're looking towards the high calling of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That's where you're going. No materialism, no humanism, nothing in the world is going to entice you, move you. You got to be steadfast. You got to be grounded and you're just going to march on. You don't, you're not going to care about what other people think, right? People who want time machine are full of worries about what other people think about them in a wrong way. You know, you know I'm not driving the car like I should. I wonder how she thinks about it, how he thinks about it, right? You know, I'm not driving this you know, expensive, expensive car to impress her, impress him. I wonder how I could resolve it. Only if you know, I could go back in time machine and I could have changed certain ways. I may wake up. And that's not going to do anything because you're not looking at Lord Jesus Christ. That's why you're thinking that way, right? You're, you shouldn't be in Christian walk trying to impress people. Amen. That should never be your goal, right? You know, at church, I have to make sure that I'm the most popular kid. <laughs> I have to make sure that I'm the most popular brother, popular sister. I have to make sure that pastor always notices me. You know, I want to be that person that some every Sunday morning, you know, pastor announces how special I am. You know, if you ever thought like that, you better get right with the Lord. Kill it. You have to resolve it. Amen. You have to resolve the sin problem, and in order to do that, you have to, second point, you have to reject the past. Just reject it. Every time it comes to you, you just got to reject it, right? Uh, no good comes off of it. Except you getting saved, except you finding out the King James Bible, all those things, rest of them, you know, if devil comes your way, just reject it. You know what? I resolve my sin problems once and for all. That's it. You know, I'm still going to, you know, rip what I've sold, but Lord's forgiven me once and for all, right? Yeah. And praise God for that. So don't, hey, hey, you know, the world, the flesh, the devil, and you wicked brethren out there, you know, don't tell me, right? You know, forget it, right? I mean, that's one thing about, you know, you know I truly respect, you know, our pastor Kim and, you know, how our church stands for. And if you got them right, sincerely, it's over. Amen. No one should ever bring it up. And if you bring it up, you're in big trouble, you know, especially in our local church, right? But if you got them right, it's over. But if you haven't got them right, it's never over. So, I mean, it's a two-edged sword, right? I mean, if you've done wrong, just confess, get right. Sincerely, it's over. If you've done wrong, if you don't confess sincerely, it's never over. Yeah. So don't ever think that you could just replace it either, right? So, but if you have resolved your sin problems, next thing is that now you have to reject the past. Just reject it. Don't even look back anymore. You and I are full of issues from our past, right? Again, besides from doing things for the Lord, which is very tiny, very minimal, besides from getting saved, which is the best thing ever. Rest of the things are very, very, how should I say, not the things that we want to write a book about no. and share with all the Christians out there, right? I mean, do you want to write about memoir about your sinful life, sinful heart, and sinful ways? If you got them right with the Lord about all the jealousies you have, all the envies that you have, all the lust that you ever have, forget it. 
all the rebellious heart you had, forget it. You got them right with the Lord, then reject it. And every time the devil comes at you, like, remember you did this? Remember her, him, they did this to you? But you're like, you know what? I'm, I'm going to reject you. Just like, you know, when someone's trying to do a slam dunk, you know, you do that super block, right? You know, you block it out. They're trying to shoot free throw block, you know? They're trying to shoot like a layup. They're trying, they come at you with all this. I love basketball, so these terms, right? They're trying to dribble by you, just steal the ball, block it. Yeah. Just when devil comes at you, flesh comes at you, world comes at you with all those evil and wicked thoughts, sinful thoughts, just reject it. Amen. You're like this. You know, it's happened in the past. I don't want to be like lost wife. I don't want to turn back. I'm just going to go forward. Yes. I'm a soldier of, in the army of Jesus Christ. My job is just go forward, right? You yeah. could try to pull me back. You could try to entice everything. You try to make me turn around, but I don't want to. I'm just going to go step fast. So you have to reject the past. And as you reject the past, the third point is you're going to renounce worldly desires. You know, once you reject the past, so you resolved your sin problems already, now you reject it. you're rejecting the past. You know, it's a pa- it's present term. You have to constantly do it. Now you're going to renounce worldly desires. Man, those worldly desires, that's enticing you. You know, this high-paying job, you know, this, this good house, great house, this, I don't know, right, you know, cars out there, this person that you could marry who's an unbeliever, you know, all these worldly friends that you could have, worldly desires that you could have at the expense of your faith in Lord Jesus Christ and your testimony, it wouldn't be too hard anymore. It's like for you, you know what? I'm going to renounce it for the sake of Jesus Christ. I mean, he gave up his life for me. Yeah. There are so many people out there, Bible believers, who's done the same. And I see that their result is the closest relationship with Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They're so happy, joyful. They're no David Downer. They always admonish people, encourage people. You know, the house is joyful. So I'm going to renounce worldly desires. You know, First John 2.15 says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Don't love the world. Just renounce it. Obviously, you have to do your best, right? There's no reason for you not to do best. Whatever situation you're in, you know, if you're working for a company, do your best, right? Amen. If you're studying, do your best. Yes. If you're taking care of family, do your best, yes. right? But you should not be mistaken worldly desires as doing your best. Yes. You should never compromise. If someone tells me, you come to happy hour and drink with the executive, you get a higher paying job, higher paying position, and you could give more money to the church. It never <laughs> works like that. God doesn't want your dirty money, yeah. right? It's like... It's, it's a very funny but very ironic when people gamble trying to give money to the church. Lord, bless this slot machine. Lord, bless the next car comes out. Lord, bless me with red, black, or any other color out there. Lord, bless me with number seven. Your perfect number, right? It is never right to do wrong in order to right. That's God's way. Yes. Then you're going to renounce worldly desires. You're, you're going to be like, you know what? I am happy because I resolve all my sin problems. I don't need no time machine anymore to feel better. Amen. Right? I rejected the past. I don't need no time machine to go back in time anymore. I'm rejecting it. Now I'm going to just renounce every worldly desires out there. If it's against the word of God, no. Nope. Simple as that, right? Abstain from all appearance of evil. Yes. If it's going to compromise my, compromise my relationship with Lord Jesus Christ, no. If it's going to offend my brethren, no. If it's going to hurt my family, no. Right? I'm just going to say no. It becomes easier and easier. Then, after you renounce all these worldly desires, then naturally, 
what's going to come, you're going to be rejoicing in your Christian walk. I mean, think about it. You know, your Christian walk could actually be joyful. You could actually rejoice. You could shout your way in your Christian walk. <laughs> Every time, you know, when you see some Christians, their head is always down. I don't want to see your head anyways, right? I would rather see your face, right? And then they're it's like, they always seem like they're full of issues. They always seem like they're full of worries. It seems like, you know, they hate their life, you know? I mean, there's a lot of mental issues with Christians, you know? Yes. There's, there's, there's a lot of Christians who want to commit suicide, right? Yes. It's wrong. Downright, it's sinful to think like that. Amen. When God gave your life, you, know, you should never think that you could take away God's life. But people come to the point when they're backslidden, when they're so, you know, spiteful, they're so rebellious and all that stuff. You know, those things are common for them. You know, as a Christian, you can't do anything that unsaved people can do. Yes. Just remember that. Yes. You know, there's no guarantee that because I'm saved, obviously the Holy Spirit will, you know, convict you. Right? Yes. Constantly tell you, don't do it, don't do it. But you could always reject it. You have free will. Right? right? So don't ever think that you're, oh, you know, safe all the time. Then think about it. When was the last time your life was full of rejoicing? I don't have to ask you. I just got to ask your family members, right? You know, don't answer because you could lie to me. And, you, and a lot of times Christians lie. Get that right too. Yes. You, know? you, you and I are liars, yes. right? You know, just to look good to other people because you have a reputation to hold up to, which is zero reputation, right, in the sight yes. of God. You try to be like, oh, is everything good, you know? And uh, people could see through you a lot of times, right? And you just realize it. You know, how joyful have I been in my Christian walk? Lately, within a year, two years, if you've been saved for a long time, right? Like 30 years ago, 40 years ago, you know, do I still have that joy? I mean, it's the first love still running. If you don't, then something happened. The things that I talked about, you're not doing it right. You haven't resolved your sin problem. Right? Even if you did, you're not rejecting the past. You're still thinking about the past. You want that time machine so you could go back. You could get those lottery numbers, right? <laughs> what, what do people say? You know, one of the reasons I want time machine because, you know, I have my lotto numbers, right? And hopefully you're not a Christian that's playing lotto anyways, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're really playing chances, you know? Christianity is about not chances. It's not. God takes care of all the lots, right? God takes care of all the consequences. So you shouldn't be taking any chances. Right? So if you are taking chances out there, just remember that you know, you're sinning against God. Right. Yeah. I mean, that's where renouncing worldly desire comes in. Yeah. You're not renouncing it. Oh, it's just uh, you know, a lotto ticket there. It's just a drink there. You know, it's just a uh, you know, compromise here and there. No one's ever going to see. Right? You always have that. Like, no one ever sees it. My phone record's all clear. You know? My computer record's all clear. Right? But if you ask any expert out there, nothing's ever clear. That's why in the court of the law, you know, lawyers always try to subpoena to get everything. Yes. It's somewhere in the cloud. You know? It never disappears. No. Right? Then... How in the world you think you could hide it from God? Yeah. The days that you have not renounced the world, it puts you back into the first place where you did not resolve your sin problem. Then you can never press forward. And you become that miserable Christian always looking for the time machine. I want to go back, I want to go back. But our goal in our life should be having rejoice, seeing, have that rejoiceful heart in our Christian walk. Whether you have million dollars, whether you have one dollar, whether you have all the food in the world, but you just have enough, 
you should have that joy in your heart. Because that's what God has given you. If you've done your best, and God says this is all you need, then be thankful, right? God never says you'll be provided with all your wants. You'll be provided with all your needs. Amen. That's all you need, right? I mean, if your health isn't where it needs to be, where you want to be, but, you know, but it's enough for you to handle, then be thankful. Yes. Because there's always people out there who's worse than you. I and mean, people who's born with immune diseases, right? They can touch anything. They can go anywhere. People who have arthritic issues, they can't stand up. People who's born blind, people who can't hear, right? Yes. But sounds like everyone here and listening, you could hear and you could see. Praise God. I mean, that's a great blessing. Yes. Something that you and I can be rejoicing about. The fact that we could read the perfect word of God, the fact that we could listen to the word of God, the fact that we could talk to each other about this blessing, blessed stuff, we should be rejoicing. Amen. Instead of always complaining about, I don't have this, I don't have that. We have to get to a point where Philippians 4.4 4 is like our theme in our life, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Where are you in your Christian life today? I mean, are you all about the worldly desires? Are you all about the time machine? Are you all about what could have been, what would have been? Are you all about never forgetting anything? Are you all about never getting right with the Lord? Are you all about being bitter, rebellious? Or do you want to come to a point, you know what? Man, I messed up a lot in my life. You know, I'm a hot mess. But you know what? Lord has given me another chance to get right. And I want to really get right with the Lord. Yes. And it's not about, you know, just lip service anymore. I really want to pour my heart out to the Lord, spend some quality time, and get right. Yes. I want to resolve it, and I'm going to reject all the past now, and I'm going to renounce the worldly desires, and I'm going to rejoice. Then, you know, what's the final step? Then you could remain faithful. No, let's turn to Hebrews chapter 10. We'll finish with this verse. You want to be found faithful. You know, at the judgment seat of Christ. Yes. Don't you want to hear? Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Come thou into the joy of thy Lord. That's how we want to finish this race. Yes. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. No time machines needed to hold on to your faith, to stand fast, staff fast. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. And you can read the rest of 24, 25, you know. You want to remain faithful. There are many Christians who start off well, they don't stay faithful, which means, what's the word? What's opposite? You become unfaithful. You become unfaithful to the Lord Jesus Christ. And then you leave the ministry. You give up faith. Just for a lot of times, tiny reasons that grows up to be a big problem because you never resolve it. Do you want time machine today? Check your heart. Do you want to just press forward and look for that high calling Amen. of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ? Yes. There's prize waiting for you. I mean, we don't need it, but Lord's actually prepare it for those who are faithful. Don't you want to remain faithful? Yes. Let's pray.